Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. For today's video, I want to talk a little bit about creating your stock, your own stock video library, how you might go about doing that, why you might want to do it. So whether you're running a YouTube channel or doing corporate videography, or like me, you're kind of doing a little bit of both, you're probably going to be shooting a decent amount of footage. And most times when you go out for a shot, you're probably going to end up with video clips that can be put into one of three boxes or maybe just one of two boxes. One is voice to camera, so the kind of talking head intro outro scenes. The second one might be shots of whatever you're shooting, active shots. And the third might be B-roll shots intended to just kind of break up the clip a little bit if there's long talking sections or you're looking to have, you know, kind of a framing scene. Um, you might shoot or put in some of your b-roll. Now something I find very helpful is after I finish shooting my video, I go through and I edit my video, I'll then kind of leave the video folders sitting there on my computer for a while, maybe for a few weeks, and then periodically I'll go back through my old video shoots and I'll see if there's anything I might want to keep for stock purposes. If I do find clips that I think have stock potential, I'll put them onto my NAS and then, and only then, I'll delete the original videos. Now, I personally don't keep all my original clips because most of them are not so, you know, not so incredible. And once you've used them in a video, that's kind of the main use for them. But I do, do engage in this process of going into my old shoot folders, looking for anything that might be useful to me in the future. So a couple of weeks ago, I was in Ireland and I went to see some interesting things. I went to see a whiskey distillery and I went to see the Galley Head, which is a wonderful uh, natural lighthouse and peninsula in West Cork. Now, perhaps in two or three years, let's just say for the sake of argument, you might be putting together a video on the topic of Irish whiskey or amazing lighthouses in Ireland. And you might be very, very grateful for to yourself for having kept a couple of those clips of the galley head so let me just show you guys what my process is kind of roughly so this is my raw folder here on my the desktop computer that i edit my videos on and what i'll do is as i said once every few weeks i'll go into these folders and i can just kind of see at first glance some of them are informational videos like Ireland, Israel, that's not going to have stock potential. But something like if you go into the folder of Nadi, right, which is a salad bar in Jerusalem. Now, perhaps I might be doing a little video in a month of, you know, best restaurants in Jerusalem. And this kind of clip of the signage for Nadi, which is going to open and play here in a second, hopefully. You know, this is this is not just such an amazing clip. It's kind of short, but, you know, something else like the, you know, the salad bowl, right? Now what you're generally looking for when you're trying to identify which clips in a shoot might have stock potential, you want to have ones that are kind of more than a couple of seconds. Ideally you want to have stabilized shots and you want to have things that again might you can you can think might be interesting to you in the future. Now just a couple of words regarding where and how you might want to store and build up your stock video collection. So this is firstly the the, the number one destination where I keep my stock is on my NAS. I use the Synology DS920 Plus. It's a really, really fantastic NAS that Synology sent me a couple of years ago when it was brand new on the market and it served me so, so well. So what I do is every time I finish one of my videos, these videos, like this video I'm making for YouTube, I'll firstly go and save the uh, final output of that video onto my NAS. And then about once every month, I use a slightly unusual optical storage media called the M-Disc and I actually create two different copies of my finished videos. One I store in a sort of CD archive box here in my office, and the other one I uh, move to an off-site location. So I have an off-site copy of my videos and an on-site copy, and the NAS is kind of the intermediate area where I'll put them. Now on my NAS as well, I have a stock folder, and I kind of use the same process, which is these, um, these DVDs, which are basically long time archival Blu-rays, the M-Disc that I mentioned, they store 25 gigabytes. So I'll wait until I have 25 gigabytes in my stock folder, and then I'll create another M-Disc and I'll call it like stock three and I'll write down the dates of stuff it contained. But while I'm building the, the library, as you can see, what I tend to do is just drop in uh, clips occasionally as I'm editing videos like Hardeman Coffee, old city and then i'll try to organize them into folders at a later point in time so you can see south of israel 0822 turkish coffee stovetop 
Jerusalem Old City. So I haven't actually uh, put a lot of stock videos into this folder recently, but um, you know, when I do more videos, gradually this will fill up to 25 and then I'll save it as a disc. Now, two more things you can do with stock videos. This is a website called Pond5. It's a very popular website for selling your stock video footage. Now, Pond5 has a really, really nice user interface. You can upload over FTP. You can upload over just a web browser and you get a higher cut of the sales if you agree to be like I am an exclusive contributor. So in the past, I have been uploading my stock to Pond5. So what I'll do is I'll firstly keep it on my NAS and then I'll duplicate this to Pond5. And then some of it does sell, which is nice. But I have to be honest, if I wouldn't get in, recommend getting into stock video for the money because... Now and again, I don't I don't know if I make like twenty dollars a month off Pond Five or thirty dollars a month, but it's definitely not not a big money spinner. And to be honest, recently I just haven't been bothering to put stuff up to Pond Five because the amount of stock I generate is small. Therefore, I don't think I'm ever going to be have a big enough stock library that's selling. It's going to really make sense. So another place you can put your stock is this website called Pexels P E X E L S dot com. If you haven't heard of it, it's a free open source library. And what a lot of people don't know about Pexels, I think, is that it's not just for photos, it's also for videos. So I'm gonna go on to my Pexels accounts. This is me here, Daniel Rosal. And in videos, this is just stock stuff that for whatever reason I thought maybe wasn't good enough to put up on uh, Pond5, and I put it up on Pexels instead. And you know, this is just a little panning shot if I remember of different Palestinian beers. And now you can give it a label in Pexels and download it and uh, play it back. So this is another option. The, the the cool thing you can do with Pexels is group stuff into collections. So you can see this is part of a collection here called Flying. And you might want to put, you know, a collection and call it like Flying Videos or In-Air Videos. Now, what you're doing when you're uploading stuff to Pexels is that anyone can download it. And I actually quite frequently make use of videos on Pexels for my own stock. So it's a nice feeling to be able to kind of give back a little bit to the community by uploading my own stock video like this video of a guy in the old city pressing orange juice stuff that's pretty easy for me to film living in Jerusalem but for someone else in a different part of the world they might have a very hard time getting that clip and now I've put up a clip that anyone can download but my point is you can use this for yourself so you can upload your own stuff to Pexels and then wherever you are in the world you don't need to be have your NAS tethered next to you you can go into your Pexel accounts and say oh yeah that that footage of a that little bit of stock of a McDonald's sign I took six months ago. That would be great for this video. Or the Irish bar, or this or this shot of the uh, train departure sign that I took in the train station. You know, I wanna do a video about trains in Israel and if I could just use that clip again, that would be super useful. So this is a clip. So I think that's enough information for getting your own stock library together, having something like an NAS or a home server, or even just a dedicated volume on your computer is gonna make it easier. What I recommend doing is my workflows work pretty well for me about every three or four weeks, I'll go back through my original footage reels and I'll pull out anything that has stock potential or I think I might wanna keep later. I'll keep that clip, I'll keep those clips and then I'll delete the original files, store that in a stock folder in my NAS and then regarding what you can do beyond that, well, if your stock's good enough and you wanna get into selling stock video, you can create an account on Pond5 and upload stuff for sale, or you can also just upload it to Pexels, which is not, um, which is basically a free photo and video library and share it with other creators to enjoy. Hope this video is useful if you're looking to create your own stock video library. And if you do wanna get more videos from me, do please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.